Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from Salt Lake City, no, from North Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Dan. Coming up on today's show uh, is calling a Muslim moderate misleading. <laughs> yeah. We, That's really we might, the, the question. We might be tricking you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We'll, we'll, mm. We will delve deeply Ooh. into... into Ooh. Who knows? It's, it's an interesting question. It's the the Islam <laughs> thing. <laughs> We're continuing with that. We we kind of sort of unsatisfactorily talked about it before. Yeah, I don't know that we got anywhere with our conversation. It's okay uh, about Islam last time we had it. So so we're going uh, we to continue to to not get anywhere. Yeah. Some more information came out, came to our our attention, our attention, and yeah, it's it's, a, it's an interesting yeah discussion. So, uh, we're definitely gonna we'll go there. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, Dan, yeah. Um, did you hear about Mother Teresa? Uh, I've I I've heard of Mother Teresa, and uh, did, did she do something new that I don't know about? Well, she might be the next governor of Rhode Island. Uh, well, I really, I, <laughs> that would be fascinating. Uh, I can see some minor problems with that plan. <laughs> Uh, apparently, uh, the leader of Rhode Island's Catholics, um, one Mr. Uh, Bishop Thomas Tobin, Ooh. um, is, uh, he, he, he wrote a, uh, a piece, uh, for their, uh, local sort of diocese newspaper, uh, -huh. uh, expressing how unhappy he is about the current candidates <laughs> to, uh, the, for, for governor. <laughs> In, in in Rhode Island, okay, uh, including uh, Democratic nominee Gina Raimondo, oh. uh, who is Catholic. <laughs> oh my God! But she's been endorsed by Planned Parenthood. Oh wow! And uh, so her position on abortion is uh, uh, what's the phrase? Uh, compromised? Um, not compromised. Uh, I can't remember the word that he's, he used. Oh, uh, um, no. Oh, the, 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 the candidates aren't terribly promising on <laughs> the abortion issue. <laughs> well. Yeah. So there's So that. his solution is? Uh, to uh, write in Mother <laughs> Teresa, who would be great on the issue. <clears throat> on that particular issue, I think, I think she would fall right in line with what he, with what he wants. Um. She might struggle with certain aspects of the job. Uh, <laughs> being alive seems to be useful. Oh yeah, yeah. when you're when and being ever, a resident. Yeah, be, yeah, being a legal uh, a citizen of <laughs> Rhode Island of Rhode Island or of the country. Yeah, yeah, those are useful. There, there's things. some problems here with the there, idea. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Uh, uh, yeah. Does he have a reason why he wants to be? I mean, it, it, because this smacks of. I don't like any of the candidates, so write in King Ding Dong as your as your yeah that, yeah it's a it's a protest vote or stay home. Well, you he know, says <laughs> either either write in Mother Teresa or he does give uh, Pope Francis as mm. another alternative. Oh, sure, sure. Um, you know, whichever one. You know, I don't. I'm maybe surprised you really don't he see said Mother Teresa in the role. I am surprised you know? he said Francis. I'm surprised he didn't say Benedict. <laughs> well, at least he has some free time on his hands, right? The guy's ready. He's ready to go. He's he's running a, a, a city state. Get Ratzinger out there. Yeah, He'll, he, that guy has he has the executive experience that yeah. he needs. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, he's right on the issues. <laughs> <laughs> and all he's doing is just hanging around in some. Uh, old priest retirement home thing you can wear gucci slippers in rhode island they don't care it's fine it's encouraged actually <laughs> <laughs> what's amazing about this is that he's like he's basically encouraging his flock to politically disenfranchise themselves yeah he's like that's yeah. i don't like any of these people let's not participate let yeah <laughs> let's not find i mean let's face it it's american politics so it's finding the lesser of the two evils right right and that's the system. Or that's as, just what you do. How often do you actually get a vote for somebody that you actually think is going to be good? Right. As Michael Moore put it, the evil of two lessers. <laughs> the, yeah. yeah, the truth is that American politics, politics in general, you're not going to get the best people. No. You're going to no. get 
shitty people, and you have to decide which shitty person is going to be less shitty than the yeah. other shitty person. So at least go with the 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 democratic candidate here. <laughs> if you're right. if you're a Catholic, because they they support like a lot of the social issues that you're concerned about. Yeah, I don't you know. know. Yeah, just pick the person. Yeah, okay, she's she got endorsed by Planned Parenthood, and he. I mean, he goes on about like um, uh, she prefers Planned Parenthood to the church or something along those lines, and it's just like, well, I, I'll bet he would I have doubt- a, a tough time finding a quote to back that up. <laughs> I bet that that's that that's not something that she I said. Planned specifically. Parenthood is more in line with her politics. Planned Parenthood, boy, what a lightning rod that completely innocuous organization has become <laughs> I know. it's so funny it's like it, i mean really their mm. main advocacy is just like hey when you have sex let's talk about being smart about it yeah and everybody's like what no <laughs> oh my god cover your kids ears they're talking yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's crazy yep. anyway oh. there you go um, I, I'm going to move us speaking of the, of the Catholics. Yeah. I, I even had to switch the order of things around because oh, I'm no. going to, I'm segueing into Catholicism. I'm th- sorry to, to no, do no, that. I'm happy yeah. to do it. I'm very, I'm okay. very flexible. I can move with okay. the, okay. with the flow of the water. All right. Uh, I, you, I'm sure most of our listeners heard about this, but, uh, in the Vatican, uh-huh. they, they recently came out with. And I'm surprised that I've never seen this headline. Here's how I headline this story. Okay. Vatican offers priests relatio. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know They what have that this is. document that they call relatio, relatio, relatio. I don't know how to say it. Okay. It looks like ratio only with an L in the middle of it. And okay. E-L. Okay. Anyway, uh... This document is not a binding document. It's just a... It's just sort of uh, a synod... Of of priests come together and of bishops, I guess, and cardinals come get together and talk about issues facing the church. Okay, and uh, and then they came out with this preliminary document from this particular synod. Okay, um, it's preliminary. It's meant to be worked on for like a year, and then they come out right. with with the final document. Oh, okay, all right. But the pre- preliminary document had some really fascinating language in it. Okay, um, it was Latin. No, I'm just kidding. That's not the language I was talking about. I'm talking that, about. that is an interesting language. <laughs> it's <so>. a fascinating. <laughs> no. Uh, well, that would be more interesting. I can think of the other. It's probably more yeah. interesting. If they had done it in Mandarin, right. that would be far more interesting to <laughs> right. me. Yeah, exactly. If the Vatican did a, a document in Esperanto. Wonderful. More Wouldn't... people would understand it <laughs> than understand the Latin. Or rather, no one would understand it. I think. I think there are people fluent in Esperanto. <laughs> I know. Uh, so... Basically, so part of what they said, and this is part, you know, what they got a lot of uh, furor about oh. uh, was asking a few interesting questions, uh, including uh, one uh, one part of the document says, quote, are our communities capable of providing, uh, oh, sorry, it, it starts by saying homosexuals have gifts and qualities to offer the Christian community. Oh. Are we capable of welcoming these people, gar- guaranteeing to them a further space in our communities? Mm. Are our communities capable of providing that, accepting and valuing their sexual orientation without compromising ca- Catholic doctrine on the family and matrimony? Well, I say it probably depends on how good of an organist <laughs> that, that <laughs> gay, person, gay is, person is. Yeah. As to like how welcoming they might be into the community. Hell yeah. I mean... you know. As soon as they start seeing what these gays are doing with the flower arranging, <laughs> I mean, you know, when, once your parish has a really nicely appointed party, we've got a lot to offer, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. We've, we've got a lot to offer a religious community. I mean, if nothing else, suddenly the priests start dressing nicer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, do, you know, you've been doing the black shirt with the white collar for so long. Mm-hmm. What can we do with this? Although black, I mean, it's, it's black. It's slimming. It's, it's classic. Nice. Sure. You know? Sure. I'm not saying abandon Everybody it. needs one good, solid black frock. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I know I wear mine almost to death. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah, overwear yeah. my frock. Well, you can wear it anywhere. <laughs> it's so versatile. <laughs> It's one of those funerals, sure. weddings. It's it's a work to evening outfit. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> K 
counseling sessions. It's fantastic. Oh my god. I feel like like Tim Gunn is now we're channeling. Um <laughs> it's interesting. This document also talked about um uh straight couples who lived together before they get married. Oh. And said, Can we accept this as something that could be good? Oh. As something that could be, you know, that that's okay what? in how I mean, is that how from a from these folks this is what could i'm that saying possibly be i mean in, in question and it's just asking questions right but it's fascinating the doc i mean just it, asking the question says a lot it says um yeah it says a lot and you know there will still be a, there are a lot of people in the atheist community who are quick to point out mm-hmm. that for all of the wild talk that we've heard from pope francis and from all of you know of all of that stuff yeah he still hasn't changed anything no within the church but we're talking about like this is a this is a a super cruiser right like this thing yeah i don't even know if that's a word but it's like (laughs) this is a huge huge ship right getting this thing to turn on a dime it's not gonna happen Mm -mm. yeah you gotta eat he, if he's in charge, if he's really steering the ship, it's going to take a minute. But um, I would still, I, I, I think it's worth pointing out. He seems to be the, laying the, groundwork. He it really does, does seem like that. But you know, Who until knows? we, 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 we shouldn't get too excited about Francis until we actually see what he's able to achieve. Well, and if the, he's able to achieve right. anything. And the other thing in is the, that, in, like, in, in, the, in this realm, he could, know? he could get all of this groundwork laid and then die the next day and nothing happens. And then they get another conservative guy and yeah, it takes another 25 years before anybody says the word gay again. Anyway, know, in, 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 in the world today, I don't think that's no, that's where it would go. Yeah. If, it, it, I mean, the, the, if he so, could guide the community to that point, is it really going to go back? Yeah. You know what I mean? Huh. It's yeah. interesting though. And well, and I think that, I mean, really, he's not guiding the community. The community's guiding them. You know what I'm saying? And they're just starting to respond. They're to just it. barely starting to catch up That's true. to the the real because on the ground Catholics, like real Catholics out there in the world, ignore most of this shit. They ignore. I mean, Catholics live together plenty. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Catholics, you know, there are gay Catholics, and then and then they just lose those gays. Because I hate losing gays. Everybody, yeah. Who wants to lose a gay? And then you have to replace the gay. <laughs> they have been praying the gay is away. Yeah. And it's a problem. And it's worked. The gays have left. <laughs> right. And the now, gays haven't changed straight. Right. But exactly. they've left. And gays, you know, gays can contribute to a con- contri- to a collection plate just as good as a, oh, yeah. as a straight person. And yeah. when you see those collections starting to go down. Oh, yeah. They're dwindling. The problem is you have to weigh... You know, the amount that the gays could possibly bring in versus how much you're going to lose from the people that you, the conservatives that you alienate. Sure, sure. It's a, it's a, it's a calculus that continues to be a problem, but then maybe that's why a document like this matters. So you have a year of sort of just testing the waters to see how far you can go. Right. Well, yeah, you just keep asking questions so that all of the old people, their minds start to like... Huh. They get confused. They get confused. Mm-hmm. All you need to do is create enough fog for they, the old folks. They look up from their Sudoku. <laughs> right. They, they take they, a break. They, they they can't get the jumble right today, so they finally like go, what? Right. What are you talking about? I it does make me wonder if there's gonna be some sort of schism in which Bill O'Reilly becomes the new Pope of, <laughs> of, of Pope the, O'Reilly. Of the conservative side of, of yeah. Catholicism. Huh. I guess you. I guess he'd have to pick a new name. Yeah, no, so he, he wouldn't be Pope O'Reilly. He'd be <laughs> Pope Bill. Pope Bill the first. <laughs> what's what's uh, what's William in Latin? Uh, I don't know. It's Guillermo in Spanish. Yeah. yeah what is it in Italian? There's uh, Giuseppe. No, Guglielmo. Uh, oh, uh, oh no. That, yeah, that's Joseph Giuseppe. Uh, I don't remember. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> that's john i can't remember which one it is but nonetheless nevertheless well <laughs> pope bill that's i'm 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 rooting for him i hope that they go with they go in that direction <laughs> there needs to that that schism needs to happen i'm um, pretty sure that needs to happen well all right um 
Well, Dan, did you hear about the, this story a few year, a couple years ago? Mm. Of uh, there was an atheist who was jailed um, for <laughs> this is uh, remarkable uh, for uh, denying a higher power, quote unquote. Jailed just for denying a higher power? Well, I mean, it's part of a, a larger story than that, but yeah. Remind me. Okay, so he was uh, in treatment, court-ordered treatment, mm. um, and uh, he's up in Shasta, and I forget what county that's in in California, mm. um, but he goes to the local, um, uh, there's basically just one um, uh, treatment facility that, that's working up there that he could go to. Uh, for to fulfill the terms of his court order. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, he was he was a uh, methamphetamine. Um, well, he was addicted to me- methamphetamine, as you are if you do it. Yeah, it's, um, it, that's an addictive substance yeah. that, that can occur on occasion. Um, and uh, so he's he's in treatment, and it's uh, the 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 center's um, treatment program is modeled after Alcoholics Anonymous twelve step program Uh uh-huh and one of those is you have to submit to a higher power right and he refused he yeah um he said no i I don't believe in that and they did the sort of the standard thing i've heard alcoholic or member aa types Mm. say that it doesn't matter what the what the higher power is sure you can create your own higher power just to fulfill this this whole thing and he he had he wanted nothing to do with it right as like because otherwise you're just kind of weaseling your way through that step. Yeah, you're, um, you're you're lying, and you're lying. Yeah, and the whole point of the of of the program is to like get to reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. And so so he um, he refuses to play along mm. uh, with that little workaround, and then uh, he uh, the, the, the 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 center got really sort of strident in their insistence that he work this step and turn it into you have to pray and you have to accept god through prayer wow and then when he refused to do that they had his parole officer uh throw him in jail right and where he stayed for a while um can't remember how many he did um he was sent to jail um for more than 100 days holy shit and uh so he sued as a uh, that that trip to jail was as a as a parole violation right for not because i don't think he was actually (laughs) nowhere in the article does it say whether or not he served time prior to this this was part of his treatment for whatever reason however he got in front of a judge the judge ordered him to do a treatment plan right and um but anyways, he uh, he just sued and was awarded one point nine five million dollars in settlement. Oh wow! Um, and uh, they have been ordered by the court the the county has uh, to provide uh, options for people who do not want to submit to a higher power. Well, good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a hundred days of jail for not lying. Yeah, is a little on the excessive side. <laughs> Might yeah. Yeah. might be a little bit excessive. Well, they said um, that he was quote disruptive, though in a congenial way to <laughs> the staff as well as other students. Sort of passive aggressive. Oh well, that's <laughs> he was being jail the motherfucker <laughs> then. For the love of Christ, if he's being congenially disruptive, <laughs> if he's being gently. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. Right. If he's being playfully annoying <laughs> for the Get love of, of god here. put the man in jail <laughs> we can't have him running around free <laughs> jesus christ well he's a decent guy but yeah. uh but you know, he he wouldn't do what we told him to do. yeah and he has to do what we tell him to do right yeah anyways well there you go now he's a millionaire uh yeah holy yeah. shit yeah one point nine five million dollars. Yeah, I'd... that's a lot of meth. <laughs> that, that dude will be partying hard. Not not the best. The, the best treatment is not is 
Yeah, I'm going to say probably not to. Well, yeah. I him. wish him well. I hope he does hopefully, wonderfully yeah, in, hopefully, his, hopefully in his sobriety. You know, what's, what's and, so uh, bullshit about this is that the 12-step system has been proven to be really ineffective. Mm. Like, pretty wildly ineffective. They haven't found a lot of things that are more more effective, but it's just hard. Addiction's just tough. Addiction's really hard. And everybody, oh. But everybody touts the 12-step system as being this great thing. Turns out it's really not. Why? Well, yeah. <clears throat> I, I just wonder if it's not the community that, you know... I mean, yeah, having to work on certain things about who you are and whatnot makes you more mindful of who you are. Sure. Great. That's awesome. Um, yeah, mindfulness is helpful. I'm showing sure. up and having to answer to a community. Yeah. That seems like to me, if I were trying to get over something, that seems like that's what would be the most effective thing. And, and a community that, that understands your struggle. Yeah. And that wants to be a part of you, helping you. Yeah. And the 12 steps, again, this is not, I've not gone through a 12 step program. I've known people who have. Right. Um, but I don't know. It seems like busy work. Yeah. It seems like something to keep you busy but i do also i a couple of them do seem really powerful Mm -hmm. you know going back and apologizing finding the people that you did wrong it's making you really face the consequences Mm -hmm. of your addiction yeah right um i can see that as helpful yeah that's a good thing i think something probably we should all do you know you could probably just the people we've done wrong i'm gonna i'm gonna start a one step uh, recovery program. Stop drinking. Stop doing meth. <laughs> the, your step, I, and it's customized to whatever it is your particular problem is. But I'm mean, your step one. Stop doing meth. Have you oh. achieved step one yet? Congratulations. Well done. You have graduated from the program. Here's your chip. <laughs> oh, I'm such an asshole. Um, uh, we should not. Let, let's be clear here. We're not really making light of addiction. No, no, God, no. <laughs> I uh, I have nothing but sympathy for yeah, those who no are addicted. No kidding. Uh, and nothing but uh, I have more than sympathy for this guy because now I have sympathy and jealousy. Well, I I'm proud of this guy. He I stood am too. up for what he and he's he been, believed. It's been a it's been a didn't believe, right? several years long uh, thing for him. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's been, been a an struggle, ordeal. I'm sure it's been an. Uh, ar- I'm sorry. I wouldn't. A prison anywhere, no. I can't imagine, uh, would be all that great to spend 100, 100 days in. Well, I'm guessing that a bunch of that of that money that he was awarded is just going to go to his, his legal team. Like, probably the bulk of it is just going to go to pay his legal fees. Because I'm guessing that is not an easy, a uh, 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 cheap trial to... Uh, I don't know. Or a cheap thing to do. I don't know. I don't know if, they're, uh, <clears throat> if the whole thing covered legal fees or not. Anyway, so. uh, we will move on. Uh, I am going to Scotland. Oh. Uh, I know that uh, I, I am actually probably going to go to Scotland uh, within the year, I think. Oh, really? But uh, in this case, I'm just talking about a story from Scotland. Okay. Um, a, a, Scot- a student in Scotland who is originally Iranian is now begging for Scotland to... Uh, grant him asylum oh no he uh came as a like as i say as a as a student i think a grad student at in glasgow um working on a master's degree and uh, he applied for asylum because he has turned his back on islam he apparently founded iranian atheists association okay and is uh is chairman of ex-muslims scotland oh so Maybe you can see an issue with him returning home, being deported back to Iran. Yeah, they don't like atheists or people who convert from no, Islam, who in, leave Islam behind. In the uh, book that they like, that Quran, yeah, it specifically says that if you leave Islam, the punishment is death. Yeah, and they've enforced it in Iran before, haven't they? Yes, they have. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, he huh. might be in some trouble. Compound that with the fact that his uncle is apparently Ali Reza Akbari, one of uh, he was who was at one point an advisor to Iran's National Security Council and former general with the Revolutionary Guard. Uh, they know who he is. They know who he is, and he's reflecting badly on a very important Iranian family. Uh oh. 
could he's in could said Iranian family perhaps save him though? No, like, maybe would they try but or would they want, want to? to? I mean, uh-huh. they're probably the one. They might be the ones calling for his for his killing. Well, it probably doesn't take much to get that ball rolling. Yeah, it's uh, but uh, so far the uh, the request for asylum has been denied. Egad, why? <laughs> this seems cut and dry. It seems cut and dry. Uh, apparently, it's not so, and uh, he is he's terrified. Is he somehow trying to manipulate the system? Like, it why, does it why matter? Would you possibly like what I mean, he's maybe. done with his life? Like, I don't get why you would deny this guy. The truth is, it's a fascinating way because I have friends huh. in the U- who are, who are studying right now in the UK and friends who have studied in the UK and right. who wanted to stay once they were done with their studies. Sure. And right now, the law in the UK is basically just they do not grant visas. They will grant you a student visa that lasts until you're done with school, yeah. and then they just boot you. Why? I don't know. That I mean, it used Seems to be like once you get somebody educated, you you want to keep, keep them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that there were a lot of people who were doing that, huh. and up until fairly recently, uh, I I had lots of friends who who would go out there. They would study acting or whatever. You uh-huh. know, I'm in the theater, and they would study acting there, and then you know fall in love with the UK and want to stay. And a lot of times they got to. Huh. Well, it is not that way anymore. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I had one friend who had to get her Italian citizenship in line <laughs> because Italy, because she had like a grandparent from Italy, and Italy right. is pretty easy to get. Like, if you have any lineage that you can show, right? They'll, I mean, it takes forever because their bureaucracy is a nightmare, but right. it's easier to get your citizenship there, right? And then once she's in the, once you're in the EU, you can sort of bounce around. Within yeah, the you EU, can work where you want. So she's now back in the, U- the UK as just, an Italian citizen. As an Italian citizen, she's wow. an American living in the UK under her Italian citizenship. Wow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's not easy. But one would think that th- I mean this. I've heard some spurious claims, but the thought <laughs> of an atheist heading back to Iran is it that they don't want to? I mean, it's the UK, so it's not like they have some beef against him being an atheist. No. No. I don't, I don't know don't what trust it is. The, are you really, do you really, you don't really be, don't believe in God, do you? You definitely do. It doesn't matter. Like, the fact that he says he didn't, he doesn't believe in God, the fact that he's turned his back on God, even just in words, even if he... That's went, enough. That's enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't matter whether you believe him or not. He's in trouble. He's put his, him, himself into... Uh, some yeah, serious just last month we reported on this. Just last month there was a dude that was that was sentenced to death. So coming to the West, declaring yourself an atheist, that's not enough to stay. What? But what if he was just like a member of some like? What if he was a a, a Christian who feared for his safety? Yeah, I don't know. In Iran, who knows? Yeah, uh, he says he he. The, his quote is, they say I am not in any danger because of my relationship with my uncle and my activities during the protests. I have been talking about my beliefs and opposition to the system. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that actually huh. means. Okay. Anyway, the the point is, yeah, Scotland is not has not yet uh, Boo. Grant, granted him. Boo, Scotland! Aside. They're gonna feel so bad when he's killed. They should put it up for referendum. <laughs> Let the people decide. Does he get to stay or not? Yes or no. Come on. Now everything in Scotland is decided with a yes-no vote. <laughs> it's like Switzerland. Yeah. Switzerland. All right. Um, I guess I only have one left. Yeah. Oh, so, shoot. So just do that story. So then. you know the um, the Untouchables? The movie starring... Uh, <laughs> it's not a movie. The Untouchables? Is that a movie? No. Is that a title? Yeah. Oh, no. It's not the movie. <laughs> Um no in in India the the Dalits or the Dalits oh, or something oh, like that okay we're talking caste system caste then. system untouchables the bottom of the caste system the uh, most uh, reviled of all right. the castes the ones that get the worst uh, most menial uh, menial and degrading jobs sure um. Uh, in some villages, in fact, they're not allowed to drink from wells used by higher class uh, caste Hindus. I like classed. Yeah. It's like that's... class and caste put together. Cha-cha. <laughs> uh, 
Um, but you know, the higher caste Hindus, um, uh, won't even drink from the same wells as, as they drink. And, uh, some schools, uh, the, the, the Dalits are again, Dal- I'm just gonna say Dalits, uh, their children, um, are often segregated from the wow. other children. I mean, it's, it's, this is, I mean, I, I, I have a really hard time wrapping my head around the Indian caste system. Right. Um, anyways, I, uh, read an article, um, uh, about a low, like a, a kid from this, a teenager from this caste, mm-hmm. um, who, uh, his goat wandered into a high caste farmer's field. Huh. And, uh, the, this farmer, uh, beat the kid and burned him alive to death. Oh, oh. And I was like, well, this story warrants being told. Um, but, like, what is this caste system? Like, where does it really yeah. come from? Um, and it led me to this article, um, which is uh, apparently Dalits are beginning to, um, as a form of protest, they are converting from Hinduism oh, to wow. uh, either Buddhism or Christianity, which, of course, officially lack caste systems. Right. Uh, and, you know, we were talking about this earlier that, you know, sometimes it's... Things like this, it's hard to, you know, it just becomes almost part of the society at large. Yeah, it's a, um, it's a, it's a culture thing, right? More than a, or as much as it the, is a religion thing. Yeah, and uh, but nonetheless, they're uh, they're starting to, uh, they're 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 hoping for a better life as Buddhists or Christians. Mm. And uh, it's it's a fascinating. It's a weird thing, you know. When I was in India. I, almost all of our guides were of the Brahmin caste, which is the highest caste. Okay. Um, and so, we, you know, we were in, when we were in Varanasi, which is a, a very sacred city to the Hindus. It's, isn't it one of the, the most sacred? Yes. Mm-hmm. I think it's the most sacred. Mm, I, okay. I'm, I don't know. It's one it's, of the three most. Right. We'll just call it that. <laughs> we'll just say it's that. <laughs> it's where it's where the, the Ganges River meets uh, Krishna's city or something like that that so, means nothing to but me. the ganji yeah anyway it's very important <laughs> i don't i'm not going to explain it all to you you wouldn't even understand it but it's very important. oh, uh, oh dear god <laughs> I'm just okay kidding uh anyway our our brahmin uh guide we were talking to him a little bit about the caste system and all of that sort of thing because we were on we we're floating you know we're in a boat on the Ga- the ganges river uh-huh. or the ganga as they oh. they call it uh-huh. Um and we f- find these funeral pyres. Right. Where they uh you know where everyone brings their their dead to be cremated uh-huh. and then just dumped dump the ashes into the river cuz why not it's the most polluted thing in the world and it's disgusting. Right. Um and he was talking about how the the people who run these uh funeral pyres uh-huh. on the Ganga are actually they they get well paid. They're actually paid quite well. You know, they're doing this for Brahmin people. They're doing this for everyone. Right. And, um, but they're still untouchables. Oh, re- because they handled the dead? Is that? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's something that they, that, that the other castes can't do. Oh. So it's this weird thing where they're, they're actually the lowest caste, uh-huh. but they got money. Interesting. It's a weird, so that was weird. And he was, and boy, I'll tell you, a couple of, of people that I talked to had this sense of like, well, yes, I'm Brahmin, but I'm, I'm more than happy to, I, I don't, I don't worry about that. I, you know, we don't have the caste system really anymore here in India. So I, mm. I, I I'll, I'll touch someone. I don't, they're not untouchable. I can touch them. That's okay. <laughs> this almost, were they holding a Starbucks? <laughs> right. While, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Actually, one of them I was talking to in a coffee shop. That's huh. that's pretty funny, huh. in in Delhi. Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's just it's still there. It's still present. Hmm. They talk about you know they talk about it like it's a thing of the past ish, mm-hmm. but it's but they all know that it's still there. Right, right. So I don't know. It's it's a very strange uh, scenario setup there. Yeah. It's, interestingly, it's not just the Hindus. There's a there's a whole Muslim sect uh, like thing intertwined with it as well really yeah huh, i, I don't surprising. understand it all but there it is 
It's all very complicated. <laughs> it is. It's like they've got their own whole country over there. It's weird. Their own way of doing things. <laughs> I mean, who am I to judge if they want to, uh, you know, uh, subjugate and oppress? Yeah. Uh, 180 million people belong to the lowest caste. Right. Like half the population of the U.S. Mm-hmm. And believe me, when you go over there, you can see that. That's very present. <laughs> Most of the people there live in some pretty extreme poverty. Jesus Christ, yeah. yeah. Well, on a much, much... I'm going to take us all the way from that sad, sad idea to Happy Valley. Oh? Which is what we here in the, the state of Utah call Provo and the surrounding area. Yeah. Um, happy largely because of pharmaceuticals, but that's fine. <laughs> That's fine. They're still happy. They're happy because they're drugged. Right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the story of a woman named Tammy Harris, who is a chaplain. Oh. Uh, in Provo. What kind of chaplain? A Mormon chaplain. Really? Okay. This is a concept that I have never heard of. Yeah, me uh, Anyone who's familiar with Mormonism, as many of our listeners are now, thanks to us. <laughs> uh, we'll hear more later. Um, we'll, uh, we'll know that, like, the Mormon system is set in stone. Like, mm -hmm. every, there's no, there's no versions of Mormonism within, within, within the corporate church, the corporate, within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Yeah. There's no, there's, there's not room for, like, well, we do it our way. Right. And we, and these guys do it their way. Right. No. Everything is by the book. Well, it turns out the chaplaincy in things like uh, the military or uh, sort of non-denominational services oh. uh, is something that the Mormons are okay with. Now, a chaplaincy in, in the military makes sense. Yeah, that does. But this is a, this, this woman, her dad was a minister, and she's LDS, and she took over for him when he died and has been doing it for a good long while. Years and years and years. So what does she do? Go to the hospital or something? Like, um, she it, does. It's uh, like I don't get it because like also a woman in the role. Yeah, that's the thing. Because like, what is she gonna do? She's not gonna give somebody a blessing. No, she's not gonna like. Like, what is she? What can she gives sermons? She preaches. I don't. What? This is this is what that does. Uh, it's a uh, she's. What does it say? The same. Uh, she every Sunday she's uh, she preaches in an inter interfaith service, and she uh, and the church has just come out with a document that officially announced it approves the centralized endorsement of all chaplaincies, including female chaplains. Is that the weirdest thing that you've ever heard about Mormonism? <gasps> It so does not jive with my idea of what Mormonism is and how Mormonism works. And I feel pretty well educated on Mormonism. Yeah, same here. So, <laughs> Frank, Frank is literally off in a land <laughs> trying to process this right now. I, I honestly, you, you know, like if, if you said, said, you know, Mormon chaplain in the military, fine. Right. I would even be like, you know, female chaplain in the military, I'd be like, I could wrap my head around it, mm -hmm. which there are, apparently. right? Like, like I because I because ultimately, more chaplain isn't sort of a standard role in Mormonism. It's sort of outside the norm, mm -hmm. something that's created for a very specific, you know, purpose and place. Right. If it were in the military, yeah. and clearly this wouldn't be uh, a priesthood leader or even like your ecclesiastical leader. Right. Right. Like this is just somebody who's giving you spiritual help. Right. Officially. Right. Um, and so, like, so I could I could wrap my head around that. What I cannot wrap my head around is the fact that she leads an inner, uh, 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 a non-denominational interfaith service. Yeah. Like, that. That. that's what, and on a weekly basis. It's not like she's a guest speaker who comes in every so often. Right. But th this is, like, her congregation. Yeah, apparently she. Uh, that blows my mind. She, I don't, yeah. I don't even know what to do with that. It's so sort of extra Mormonism. Yeah. And the fact that more, the, I mean, 
I can see someone, just a single person breaking off and just kind of doing this. Ad hoc. Right. On yeah. their own. Just trying to, yeah. They gone, they, she's gone rogue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine. <laughs> but the church endorsed this. Yeah, that's really weird. Anyway. Where is it, by the way? Is it in Provo? Yeah. Yeah, she's, she has twice served as the chair of the Utah County Ministerial Association. Well, it's because they really don't have anybody but a Mormon to They've hold that position. They've got four people in all of Provo <laughs> that aren't Mormons. Mor- Mormon ministers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God. Or Mormon. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, there's there's, there's two con- congregations that are non-Mormon in all of, right. in all of Utah County. No, it, folks, if you ever get a chance to go to Utah County, you can probably just skip that chance. You don't, <laughs> you don't need to do that. Such bullshit down there. Anyway, sorry. There are a few reasons. There are very few reasons to go. To go to, yeah. 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 Anyway, uh, if you'd like to tell us more about what you're thinking in the world, uh, please do so by writing into us. You can write to us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you could leave us a voicemail at 424 666 8442. Or jump onto the Facebook or the Twitter feed, uh, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist or at TGI Atheist on Twitter. And also you can join a new conversation that's happening. Mm. That's actually, it's going great. I'm, mm. I'm really pleased about what's happening. And that's our uh, closed group on Facebook. Um, it's something that we, we, Tried to be very careful not to write the word atheist anywhere on it on it that the right. public can see. Right. Uh, so you can go on there. You can vent your spleen about what's happening without... Your... And no one from the outside can see what you say. Right. They'll know. So that's called the TGIA Members Only Lounge. Right. Um, and... Apparently, we've been told that there are... There's a group called... There's a group called TGIA Family. And that just seems to be an Asian family. Thank God I'm Asian family. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It just seems to be a bunch of Asians. You can try to join them if you want to as well, but mostly just the TGIA members only lounge. All right. Uh, great thing to do. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Um, a patty break. Yay! Once again. Um, and uh, he has quite the uh, 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 revelation for us. Oh, yes. It's not as in a revelation from God. He's telling he, us something that's he, revelatory. He's going to reveal something. <laughs> this person says, I'm planning to go on a mission trip to Kenya in December. I believe that God heals today, and I'm not consumed about the chance of contracting Ebola. I'm also a person who's willing to take practical precautions. However, some friends and family think that my decision to travel is foolish during this season, saying that I'm testing God and asking if I have a death wish. What do you think? I do not believe I'm being foolish, and I want to honor those around me, but I want to follow God's call on my life most of all. Do you think there are undue risks that we do not know about and the dangers are higher than perceived here in America? Um, not in Kenya. Um, you, you might get AIDS in Kenya. The people have AIDS. You got to be careful. I mean, the towels can have AIDS. Uh, so there, there are things, there are diseases in Africa. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> God. The towels, even the oh, towels. Oh my God. Earth. Well, you know, it's an, it's an epidemic. Did you know that one in four towels? In Kenya, <laughs> has contracted <laughs> HIV. It's a it's a tragedy. The towel oh. community has been very. Uh, it's been hit the hardest. Actually, it's, it's one of the harder hit. <laughs> oh my god, uh, that was I. I just just <laughs> complete Ebola. No AIDS. Yeah, yeah. Don't. Oh, you don't have to worry about Ebola in Kenya. It's not. That's a. That's a. A Western Africa thing. Kenya's on the east. You're fine. Good. Just don't. Just be aware of the. You'll towels. get AIDS. You're, you're gonna get AIDS. <laughs> you're not gonna get Ebola. You're gonna get AIDS. You're totally safe from Ebola, but AIDS will get you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and I love that the 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 the, 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 the 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 emailer was like, "Oh no, I believe in the power of healing." What do you think of that? And yeah. he, and he doesn't even mention that. Yeah. Like God's. Yeah, he's been around the block. <laughs> yeah, he, he knows that God doesn't heal AIDS. Right, exactly. Or Ebola or towels. <laughs> God, God does not heal towels. That's... Oh, Dan. Anyway, there you go. Should we start with a, a voicemail? Yeah, sure. Um, I wanted. Let, let's just get. I don't want to say get this one out of the way, but it's a topic that we said we weren't going to discuss anymore. 
Oh yeah. And uh, and so and we it's got not multiple really a, missives about this, but this yeah. is the one that we're gonna. This is the one that we're gonna play. We, you only and, get one. Uh, <laughs> This is Wes from Alabama, not to turn this into a circumcision episode again, but my wife and I have kind of a moral dilemma. Uh, we have a three-year-old, and you could probably hear him watching Curious George, and we got him circumcised, but we, at the time, we didn't really care, had no opinions whatsoever, and then since he's been born, we both came to, like, being pretty strong atheists, luckily. Yeah, I guess that didn't happen a lot, but... So on our next kid, we're like, I don't want to get him circumcised, but at the same time, if I don't get him circumcised, then him and his older brother is going to like, be different, and we didn't know if that would cause like maybe like jealousy or I don't know. Just I'd like to get some input from you and maybe some viewers to uh, if y'all can help us with this problem. Thanks. I think that's well, an interesting question. Yeah. Here. So th- first of all, thanks for calling in. Yeah. Uh, I, I gotta admit, I've I've heard question this kind of thing raised before. You know, I I've heard people talk about, well, I don't want to get my son circumcised because he won't look like me, or he won't look like his friends at school. It'll he'll be, be different. He'll be different. Mm-hmm. I guess I just I'm kind of baffled by that. Hmm. We're all different from each other in a hundred thousand different ways, and just because it's your penis, that's yeah. different. Yeah, I mean, a penis, first of all, that's like the last thing anybody's going to see anyway. Most people will never see it. Most people will never see your kid's penis. They won't know that he's different. Hopefully. Right. Hopefully most people. Right. And even brothers. Brothers are different from each other. Yeah. You know, I I guess it doesn't really... Well... They may want an explanation at some point. And I think the explanation is, is fairly simple. It's just the truth. When child A was born, when the first child was born... You you hadn't come to a conclusion on this topic. Maybe sure. you really hadn't even thought about it. Yeah. And you just went along with what seemingly is just what everybody does, right? Yeah. Because there was there was no even process about it. You'd get your child circumcised. Yeah. Um but now you're at a different place. That's I don't know. Maybe when they're younger that's a hard conversation to have, but like they should be able to get that. Yeah. You know. It's just I like, and and it it seems like such a non issue. All penises are different. Pen- yeah, penises you know, are that's different. What you tell the kids, well, you s- all penises are different. Yeah, you you notice that your eye colors are different too. Yeah. You notice that your hair looks a little different. People are different. Yeah. And then you know when they get older, you say, "Oh, I, I mean, the truth is, we hacked off part of your penis." <laughs> <laughs> no, I I you know I, I I get it. It's a it's a it's a thing, but uh, I I don't think you should let that worry you. No. Uh, if if you're if you're wanting to not circumcise your child, then don't circumcise your child. Yeah, and that's where I would say. And hopefully, uh, you have a girl, <laughs> and you don't even have to worry about it. Oh no, they're they're definitely having a boy. <laughs> the Lord told me. <laughs> All um, right, do you have any email, Dan? Sure. Uh, this is from Moses. Every time I, every, I, I think Moses has written into us before, and mm-hmm. it always makes me want to. I always. Think about the Ten Commandments, the movie The Ten Commandments. Okay. And I always want to be like the woman who's who's throwing flowers out her window saying, Moses, Moses. You remember when there, there's a parade going by, I think. Oh, okay. I, you clearly did not watch that movie as many, many, many times as I did when I was a little no. tyke. No, no, no. Ask me about Ben-Hur and I'll tell you all about it. Yeah, I loved that show. <laughs> anyway, Moses wrote to us. Uh, he said, um, he was, he, he, he wanted to take us to task about separation of church and state. Okay. Uh, he says, uh, I totally believe separation is necessary and essential. Don't get me wrong, but where in the const- but nowhere in the constitution says there is separation. Just people have the right to practice their own faiths. I, I could be wrong, but if you check, uh, he says, according to my Thomas Jefferson podcast, they were talking about it, and it sounded like the separation idea was because of good old Jefferson, uh, which had nothing to do with the Constitution, uh, but a letter that he wrote. Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, so he he wanted us to clarify that. Okay. Um, I. So this has and and I the reason that I wanted to to mention this on the show is because I've actually seen this uh, this trope this meme 
before that that nowhere in the Constitution does it talk about separation of church and state. Right, by name. Right, and that's the issue. Right. It doesn't say those words in the U.S. Constitution. Right. It doesn't say the, the, that that was a phrase, the concept of separation of church and state. That phrase was written by Thomas Jefferson in a letter uh, to a bunch of, of uh, ministers, I believe, uh-huh. when he was talking, when he was trying to reassure them that they were going to be able to preach whatever they wanted to oh, okay. uh, without interference from the state. And he said, we are going to construct a wall of separation between church and state. Okay. However, the concept of separation of church and state is very, very neatly enshrined in our constitution. Mm. And that is what that's in the first amendment. And there are two clauses uh, that are talked about in, in, in that, in, in that way. Okay. Um, there's the establishment clause. Okay. And there's the, um, the other one, <laughs> you know, Oh, it's the other one, the other clause, the other Damn clause. It. Yeah. I didn't actually have this pulled up. Uh, so separation of church and state. <laughs> I'll just Google it real quick. <laughs> Cause I can't think of the name of the other clause. Anyway, the well, establishment, yeah. the establishment clause, uh, discusses, um, that the United States cannot establish a state church. Exactly. Um, the, the, U the, that the government is in, is in no way in the business of, um, religion of religion. And then the other clause is just about uh, the government can't in, infringe on the rights of the citizens to practice their religion. Right. Sounds like separation. Sounds right. a lot like Sounds the like state has no business in religion. In religion, yeah. If you can't make a religion as right. the state, and you can't get involved in the practice of religion as the state, then there is separation. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's what people... So, so Jefferson's right. So if anybody and ever the Constitution's says, right. Right. And those people that say otherwise are wrong. Right. It, so, yeah, if, if, if anyone uh, comes at you with the whole uh, separation of church and state isn't in the Constitution, that's a lie, you can just say, you're right that those words <laughs> are not in the Constitution. However, However, for 200 and how many years we've been interpreting that as separation of church right. and state. Yeah. That's just a label that we call that part of the... And the fact that that's what we've always done. <laughs> right. And the fact that that is the correct thing for... Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, anyways. The free exercise clause. I think that's what the other clause oh, is Oh, okay. Called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. All right. Um, and then here's a little voicemail um, thanking us. Hey, guys. This is Des. I was just calling because uh, I work in LGBTQ affairs, and we went to a – our little team went to a queer film festival tonight, and one of the first shorts that was part of the night was about a Mormon family with uh, a gay son. And I'm watching this whole thing, and then afterwards, our little team goes out for a beer, and we're talking about it. I end up lecturing, like – these five other people from my work about, like, Mormons and being gay. And, like, I, I know a lot. And the only reason I know a lot is because I've listened to you guys talk about it a lot. And as I just kept saying stuff, I was like, yeah, you know, the days of the, what was it, Pioneer Day in the parade, I told them about the recent, the gay Mormon Pioneer Day float thing and I was just at that point I was like I know way too much about Utah <laughs> so I just thought it was funny but like you guys are you're getting in my head and I wanted to let you know that it's kind of cool to know that much about Mormonism as like a non-believer <laughs> it's like a fun area of knowledge so thanks I like what you do and I like to see how successful you are becoming and thanks bye well, thank you. Well, we like what you do. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. That's, thank you uh, for for thanking us, and and <laughs> you're welcome for us getting in your head. <laughs> Expect more. Yeah, we're gonna. That's our whole goal now. We've just we've changed our mission to just now. Our mission. We don't care in what way. We just want to get in your head. <laughs> 
We're in your <laughs> head. <laughs> do, you, do you have one or two more? I, I, that's it. That's it for yeah, you? Play another one. Oh, all right. Um, this one just touched me really, really deeply. Um, and so it's, it's getting played uh, by and large just for that. Good reason. Hey, Frank and Dan, this is Adam from Las Vegas. Um, I've called a couple times before, but um, I just wanted to uh, call and talk about um, uh, same-sex marriage in Nevada, and specifically Las Vegas. Um, I, my profession is I'm actually a wedding officiant at a major Las Vegas resort, and um, I never talked about that before. But um, just wanted to say I performed my first same-sex uh, legal marriage um, on Saturday, uh, and uh, I've been doing commitment ceremonies for years where I was unable to use any marital vernacular because of the requirements of being licensed to do weddings in Nevada. But I just kind of wanted to say what a awesome day it actually is and was. I mean, I got a little choked up. I was actually able to perform a ceremony for the very first time for two lovely ladies who um, wanted to get married, and they actually booked their wedding before they even knew that it was going to be legal in Nevada, so they went down and got their marriage license, came into where I performed ceremonies, and um, we ended up doing the very first uh, same-sex ceremony at that particular resort, and um, it was amazing. I mean, we're living in an age now where we actually get to treat people like people, and everyone has the right to be with who they love. And I know it's a show about atheism. This doesn't technically have anything to do with atheism, but... Uh, just wanted to say how awesome it was after, you know, 10 plus years of doing commitment ceremonies that I was actually able to perform a legal wedding for these two women. And um, that's it, guys. So I uh, uh, love the show. I've been listening since episode one. And uh, uh, thanks so much. Bye. Well, thanks, Adam. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I just I absolutely love that. And you're right. It's not technically atheist. It is, too. It's it's, re- it's related. It's well, it's related in that there has been religious opposition, right? Right. The, the Which only is reason fine. to present to prevent homosexuals from being married is because yeah, Jesus said not to. So let's have a little victory dance. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Let's <laughs> let, let's, let, let's let's celebrate a little bit. And I I seriously, when I first heard that, I was I was deeply moved. It's yeah. a wonderful perspective. One that I really haven't, I haven't heard any officiants talk about it, about performing their first game, like legal marriage. Right. It's just beautiful. It's amazing. That's wonderful. It's great. And um, uh, what a weird job you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, there's it's, a, I mean, it's an almost only in Las Vegas sort of. Oh my God. A Vegas, <laughs> it, I mean, how does it feel? Every, every officiant of weddings knows that, you know. The, the statistics say it's only going to stick about 50% of the time. But a Vegas wedding? Come on. You got to. You're. It, that's not. <laughs> oh, damn. It's going to stick like maybe if 20% you, of the time. No, like we're not talking about like a drive through wedding chapel here. We're talking about a destination wedding. Yeah, that's Somebody true. saying, oh, I want to go. That's we're getting true. married. Where do we want to get we're married? We're at the resort. Let's yeah. go to this resort. Have a great time. You know. Still, I want to know how many like how many drunk weddings do you do? Like where they just decided and they're like, hey, we need somebody to do this. Like and there's a little walk-ins welcome sign right, in front of right, the chapel. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Or they go to the concierge <laughs> and they're like, where do we get married? And the concierge is like, well, Adam's over there. He could do it for you. <laughs> Dearly beloved, <laughs> we're gathered to join these two drunk people together. Who are still in their swimsuits. <laughs> in holy matrimony. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, that's seriously that's awesome. thank you for sharing that uh, i did want to mention that we do have uh, a donor we only had one this this week and that, that makes me sad mm. but but it make but he was very generous and i wanted to thank say oh. extra thanks to roy uh for for your generous donation for picking up the slack right yeah yeah because the rest of y'all <laughs> need to get on the stick <laughs> but yeah thanks a lot to roy uh, uh, we, we, yeah, we've got some new goals coming up with the uh, with the whole donation thing that we'll be we'll be rolling we'll be rolling out. those out. But, so, but nothing in, to talk about today. In the meantime, we really uh, we really we sort of need uh, we need, well we need more money. So if you guys want to uh, to donate to us, <laughs> Frank's looking at me like I'm such an asshole we, for saying that. We need more money. What are you into your bookie for? Uh, <laughs> like oh, what well, what do you need money for? <laughs> Look, I've got some uh, beautiful vacations planned. 
<laughs> yeah. No, no, seriously, no. it is very helpful for us to to we're be able to put the show on what and we're, to be able to do the things that what we we're like trying to do, to do is make this our thing and to build the show and, absolutely and yeah. and we can't really do that right now so we you know we do as good a show as we can possibly do for you mm-hmm. uh you know, under these circumstances but if we get donations you know if, if if we can build our donation base if you guys can participate with this with us on this mm-hmm. uh we hope to make some some good improvements to the show and to uh content other content that we we can put out absolutely if you want to participate in that go to thank god i'm atheist.com click on the support tab and you're there it's just that easy you're done yeah all right. Um, well, we promised a little discussion about uh, moderate Muslims. What moderate Muslims? What Frank? moderate Muslims? Yeah. Um, I <laughs> seriously, um, I I came across this video, um, which well, let me set set oh. a stage here a little okay. bit. I mean, this is this is right in the wake. Last week we talked about the whole thing with Bill Maher and uh, Sam Harris and the all the flack that they were catching uh-huh. um, for. For not in, being inclusive about, um, you know, moderate Islam, for, for taking Islam to task rather than talking about uh, extreme Islam, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and that's been a, a, a pretty big thing. And so, you know, they've they've written about it, Harris has written about it, and just talking about the concept of, is it Islamophobia to, uh, to lay sins at the the feet of the religion itself rather right. than at the feet of the extremists of the religion. Um, can we even talk about this? Is are liberals even allowed to talk about, uh, ab- about Islam as the, on, on, as a whole, uh, without getting in trouble from PC police. Right. Um, who, by the way, apparently take the form of Ben Affleck. <laughs> the, he is apparently <laughs> the chief of the PC police. Uh, I think he has a badge. I'm not sure. I, I would believe that he has a badge. Uh, but the other the other police officers uh, who are coming after after these guys are people like Reza Aslan, mm-hmm. who's uh, who's who is Muslim, so has a vested interest perhaps in his mm. religion not being slandered, besmirched, besmirched. Uh, <laughs> but he, I mean, I and I've read a lot of the stuff that he's been, or you know, he's been making the rounds on the talk shows and whatever yeah. and i've seen a lot of it and i find it frankly largely disingenuous really he okay. sets up a lot of straw men mm. uh that aren't really what mar and harris were saying to take them to task for things that they didn't actually say that they kind of skirted around the edges of or whatever and he i, th- I think he's a little disingenuous in his stuff so let's uh let's but but you found this video i found a video tell us what it is um, it is a, um, it's at a, a, an event, um, that has a big banner behind it that says Islam.net. Mm. Um, and, uh, the, ostensibly this is a, not a, a, a radical group, right? This is a, a gathering of, of, uh, Muslim men. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know tons about the video itself, but it was posted on Reddit and uh, by um, a former Muslim. Um, and, uh, and she, she, she sort of had t- headlined her, um, her post on, on Reddit as um, something about what, what liberals fail to understand about Islam or mm-hmm. something like that. And sure. the video on YouTube actually says um, what normal Muslims think and Europe fails to understand, uh, and so this this is a um, an imam looking guy. I, again, not quite sure who it is. He's very Islamy though, <laughs> and unfortunately, there is some annoying music playing under the video. But um, if you can bear with that, uh, just for a minute, it, it 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 warrants listening to. And we're actually going to chime in here and give um, a little bit of uh, narration about what's happening. Um, from the crowd. Are, are we going to mis- mystery science theater this thing? We'll have to just a little bit. Okay. Let, let's not go overboard. But uh... don't, don't tell me what to do, Frank. <laughs> it's my show too. Can we have this camera focusing on all the audience? Because every now and then, every time we have a conference, every time we invite a speaker, they always can come with the same accusations. 
This speaker supports death penalty for homosexuals. This speaker supports death penalty for this crime or this crime or that. He is homophobic. He, they subjugate women, etc., etc., etc. It's the same old stuff coming all the time. And we always try to tell them, I always try to tell them that, look, it's not that speaker that we're inviting who has these extreme radical views, as you say. These are general views that every Muslim actually has. Every Muslim believes in these things. Just because they're not telling you about it, or just because they're not out there in the media, doesn't mean they don't believe in them. So I will ask you, everyone in the room, how many of you are normal Muslims, you're not extremists, you're not radical, just normal Sunni Muslims. Please raise your hands. The, and all the hands go up. Everybody, yeah. mashallah. Subhanallah. Okay, take down your hands again. How many of you agree that men and women should sit separate? Please raise your hands. The hands go up again. Yeah, not shocking at this point. Everyone right. agree. Everyone agree, brothers and sisters. Subhanallah. So, so it's not just these radical sheikhs then. Allahu Akbar. Next question. How many of you agree that the punishments described in the Quran and the Sunnah, whether it is death, whether it is stoning for adultery, whatever it is, if it is from Allah and His Messenger, that is the best punishment ever possible for humankind. And that is what we should apply in the world. Well, who, who agrees with that? Every single hand goes up. Allahu Akbar. Are you all radical extremists? Subhanallah. So all of you are saying that you are common Muslims. You all go to the different massages, no way. Or is it, are you like a specific sect, like the Islam net sect or anything like that? Are you like that? No. Is it, are you like that? Please raise, your, please raise your hand if you like this extreme Islam, that sect or anything like that. No one. Allahu Akbar. How many of you just go to these normal mas masajids in Norway? Every, the normal Sunni mosques. Please raise your hands. Allahu Akbar. So what's, what's the politicians going to say now? What is the media going to say now? That we're all extremists? We're all radicals. We need to deport all of us from this country. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. 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 May we have the next question, please? And there you have it. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, the, the website was islamnet.no. This is actually Norway. Yes, it's a Nor so. yes, and we went to that, and we don't speak Norwegian, so. Uh, it, but it's it's it <laughs> looks about like what you would expect yeah. a but, site to look but like. But nonetheless, the, here's a group of 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 Muslims, not claiming any kind of. I mean, the question really is: Do radicals go? Yeah, I'm a radical, right? You know, but nonetheless, this is sort of just a general open event by the appearance of it. They're intentionally filming it. They're intentionally getting it out there. And they're saying, hey, we're moderates, and we believe in the same thing that you're saying is extreme. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's hoping to gain from this. Definitely no political points. No. <laughs> no. I, and, and it's weird. And you can see, I think, I, you know, I only watched the video once, but I, like, watched it. I heard it. But I, it did look like there were some people who were a little reluctant to raise their hands or whatever. Mm -hmm. And in, that, that could also be because they're not native English speakers. I don't know, but it, th there was clearly someone in the front row who was, who was trying to explain it <laughs> to, to somebody the guy else sitting next right. to him who was like, what am I supposed to do? What, why are we raising our hand? Yeah. yeah. But beyond that, the, the bulk of the room. Yeah. And not just like, Oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. you're hard pressed to find somebody who's not raising their hands. Yeah. It's, so, I, but anyways, it's, it's, sh it's, kind of shocking what it and speaks he's to, kind of a loose cannon he's like what know? are they gonna call us all radicals or all extremists um, well maybe kind... we'll back off of that and just call you muslims and just and be terrified right exactly maybe muslim maybe islam is just extreme 
Maybe that's the thing. Well, he's probably his point though is that how can we be extreme if we all believe this? <laughs> right. Right. So compared <laughs> So I guess his point is when we're comparing Muslims to Muslims, there's there's no extremists? I the whole thing is just crazy. Yeah. Th- that's what we're really getting to is that the whole thing is crazy. The, but here's there is the counter argument here, which is to say that Islam is just behind Christianity in realizing how stupid it is. <laughs> what? I mean, Islam arose what four hundred years after Christianity, somewhere in that range. I'm not. I'm not sure on that timeline. But what I'm saying is, Christianity in the Bible has plenty of bullshit. Has plenty of like stonings and killings and the real. You know, it's the same rules, right? But Christian Christians have long since realized. Oh no, we don't actually believe those rules. Those. <laughs> We know that's bullshit. Right. We don't do that. We would never do that. In Islam, they haven't gotten to that point yet. Right. It seems like in Islam, they have not gotten... I mean, some... I think in, like... I would say that most mainstream Muslims in the U.S., in most of Europe, I would say that the mainstream Muslims, most of them don't believe that you should stone an adulteress. However... Some of them do, and you've got some numbers for us. I do have some numbers. Why don't you uh, start delving into that? Uh, I mean, because what we're... The window got closed. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. I mean, what we're talking about... So the question becomes... Here we go. So how many people... Like, what are we really looking at here? Yeah. What is the... uh, What are the actual figures for this? So this was a study that was a survey done by Pew... Um, um, that involved more than uh, 38,000 face-to-face interviews um, performed in more than 80 languages. Mm. Um, it covered Muslims in 39 countries, um, which for the purposes of this study, they've divided into six different regions, um, Southern and Eastern Europe, uh, which would be Russia and the Balkans, mm. uh, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, South Af- or I'm sorry, South Asia, uh, Middle East and North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. Right. Um, and uh, so they 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 were unable to look into um, they weren't able to perform the, these surveys in Saudi Arabia or in Iran. Yes, Iran. And uh, they. Um, yeah, because if they had done it in those countries, those people wouldn't. You can't even be honest. If you were, they'd right. be afraid that they're that it was actually a secret right. government test. Well, and then, but there's also the they're suggesting that um, that actually probably skews these numbers from the extreme. Right, the, the, these numbers are going to sound a lot less shocking than they would have if you'd been able to include those two countries. Because those two countries would have would have had much more radical views likely exactly than uh than um, the rest of the country. And so you were just talking about um women, right? Yes, mashallah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I I want to start using mashallah as a like <laughs> I, I wouldn't. I just think just it's go around. Uh, sorry, in that in that video it just struck me that like they have oh, they have their own version of like hallelujah. Right. Praise Jesus, thank you Lord. Okay, so I I've, I've scrolled down to the women's rights um part of the the survey. Mm-hmm. Um, the, this is a median percentage of Muslims who completely or mostly agree um, that a woman should have the right to choose uh, if she veils or not. Okay. Okay. And then um, the other uh, thing that it's testing is a woman must obey her husband. Right. Okay. So the right to choose if she veils or not. Um, in South, uh, Southern Eastern Europe, 88% feel that way. Feel that she has the right to choose. She has the right. Okay. Um, Southeast Asia, 79%. Central Asia, 73%. Um, Sub-Saharan Africa, 40%. Wow. Um, but then we look at the number, um, um, of, uh, related to whether women must obey her husband. Yeah. That question a wife must be, behave her husband. Um, Southern Eastern Europe, which was a great place for the veil, right? Forty three percent think that she must obey her husband. Must bo- must obey her husband. So yeah, still below fifty percent, but holy shit, yeah, forty three percent think that. Yeah, uh, Southeast Asia, 
93%. Jesus. Central Asia, 70%. South Asia, 88%. Middle East, North Africa, 87%. We don't have numbers from Sub-Saharan Africa. Right. Now, here's the thing. It's just 100%. Reza Aslan would say at this moment, he would pipe in and say, see... It's different all over the world. It's these are cultures. This isn't about the religion. It's about the culture. These are countries that have ten million Muslims or more, right? And it yes, it varies. But when you've got even the most moderate in this in in this roundup being forty percent in favor of a woman being completely subject to her husband, right? Uh, that's high. That's high. That's a problem. Nonetheless, we're talking about, I mean, none of these numbers, you, you get an average of this. It's all horrible. Yeah. It's all, it's all absolutely horrible. And that's the thing. Yeah. 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 We're not talking, we're not talking about, you know, the the people like Aslan like to label this a cultural problem or like to label this, you know, this is a, that's a sub-Saharan African problem and that's a Southeast Asian problem. No, this is a Muslim problem. This is a problem that is pervasive throughout the religion. Right. And just because not everyone in the religion believes this way, if 40% of the people in the religion even if it's just forty percent, but it sounds to me like like the average skews higher. Mm. But even if just forty forty percent believe that the women are subject to their husbands, there's something wrong. You've got a that serious is serious problem. We now know in an enlightened era <laughs> that that's incorrect. <laughs> you are incorrect, Muslims. All right, uh, this is uh, asking about Sharia law. Oh, good. Um, should Sharia law? Uh, let's see. Um, this is the median percentage of Muslims who favor enshrining Sharia. Mm-hmm. Um, South Asia, 84%. Southeast mm-hmm. Asia, 77%. Middle East, North Africa, 74%. Sub-Saharan Africa, 64%. And then in Europe, uh, it's a lot lower. So, uh, Southern Eastern Europe, 80 or I'm sorry, 18%. And uh, Central Asia, 12%. But where this gets starts to get interesting is... Um, I mean, when we look at specific countries, um, Afghanistan's 99%. Mm. Iraq is 91% right. of, of Muslims favor Sharia being uh, enshrined as law for everyone. Or for, for, I'm sorry, into the system. Because there is this thing about Sharia where it's only supposed to be applicable to Muslims. Right. Um, but then we, we look at that um, support for, where was that? Um, should Sharia apply only to Muslims? Uh, 64% of Southern Eastern Europe, uh, says yes, it should apply only to Muslims. So there's, which means that over a third of of, them mm -hmm. believe that no, it should apply to everybody else. And that's the best it gets. Right. Um, if you look at the Middle East, North Africa, 51% say that it should apply to Muslims only, uh, Central Asia being right in the middle, 59%. Um, so I, I I mean, and we should clarify Sharia when we talk about it because it it gets thrown around a lot. It's basically, it's the moral and religious code of Islam. It's, it's, it's the, these are the guiding principles of Islamic morality. Mm -hmm. And you know what? In the, in the United States, a lot of people basically want Sharia law too. They just don't call it that. (laughs) In the United States, they want... Sharia law to be uh, to be part of the law only they want it to say uh, have a Christian name instead right. of an, instead of the word Sharia and they will fight tooth and nail to prevent Sharia law from coming in right. but they'll they will they would also fight tooth and nail to have exactly the same shit implemented under the word Christian instead right. of the word Sharia yeah, absolutely yeah I mean I don't want to get so like numbers heavy here no but um, the numbers are important yeah the numbers are what's are what actually tell the story here uh-huh because you know when you have this many people that wrong you know that something's wrong not just with the culture not just with the country but with Islam yeah yeah uh, and I mean and that and that's the thing that I think that we need to start being a little bit more willing to say which is that they're wrong. Yeah. This is it, it, it they're wrong. I don't care what your what your book says. No. I don't care what your god said. Uh you're wrong. Yeah. 
equality is right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, fair treatment of homosexuals is right. Mm-hmm. N- not killing them. Uh, equal treatment, Dan. E- not fair. Equal and fair. <laughs> all of the all of the things. And also, yeah, not not killing people for being homosexual yeah. is 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 the correct thing to do. And killing them for being homosexual is incorrect. Mm-hmm. And I think we can state that categorically. I have no problem just saying that right out. That's that's where values should be. That is where uh, that is. You know, it's it's categorical. Right. I dare you to argue with me on that point, everyone, <laughs> all of you listeners who are on our side probably and wouldn't uh, wouldn't argue with me because you're listening to our show. Right. But I wonder what the takeaway here is, Dan. Like, what, 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 like, what is what is the point here that we're really trying to make? It's are a, we just saying, you know, lay off Bill Maher? No, no, because I think Bill Maher's a douchebag half the time anyway. <laughs> I, I'm not a big Bill Maher fan. At very least, uh, you know, Harris, who gets some things wrong too. Mm-hmm. At least he like takes the time to sit down and actually write out his his things. So go to go to Harris's blog if you want to read some interesting shit. And then go and see, check out what Reza Aslan has to say about it. But I think that the idea that I think I think the 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 question is is it time for we as 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 sort of a liberal uh group of people which atheists tend to be not always. Not always, but I mean at very least liberal socially. At the very least we can say we have no no like external construct driving us toward really stupid ideas. Mm. At very least, what we should be doing is we should be attacking ideas. Mm. And I think that as Sam Harris made that point on Bill Maher's show, that I you know, we should not be attacking humans. We should not be attacking people for right. Home. But but ideas are fair game. Mm-hmm. And these are bad ideas. <laughs> you guys these these you Muslims you have some bad ideas. Yeah. And the Christians have a lot of bad ideas too, but they gave up on the worst ones. For the Somehow. most part. Yeah. They, they gave up I mean even though they still hate they may still hate gays. But they may, it, they may still they may long for the day when they could, you know. Right. And beat you get, up gays. And the most and the most extreme uh Christians, you know, you go to down south and you start to hear some stuff that's pretty similar to what you're hearing from the is from from Islam. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. But at very least, you know, we have root laws in place where you cannot go and uh and stone a woman to death or even not to death for adultery. Right. You, you can no, def- it can't even be a gentle stoning. No. No, a light you, stoning. You can't. You can't pebble her. There's, you can't even pebble a woman for adultery. Uh, so, but not, yeah. So I mean, like there are rules in place to prevent all of this, right? right, right. To prevent people from acting on the worst parts of the Bible, right? Um, and in our country, you, you know, you can't enact the worst parts of the Quran either. But the fact that people believe that that's the right way to go, anyway. It's disturbing that you could have a group of people in Norway, right? Like N- liberal as fuck Norway, liberal as fuck Norway, peaceful, like, like, uh, like happy easy, little Norway. easy living yeah. Norway. Yeah, we got and who listeners in like, Norway. Look at the society that they live in and say, look at what these people with their values, what they've created and what they've achieved right. and not want to emulate those values yeah, and their way of life. Right. And adopt it as their own. Now, like why they would go in and still believe that stoning is the appropriate thing to do yeah. in cases of homosexuality and adultery. Like, uh, ugh. well, it, but- boggles the mind that you couldn't just say i went to this place because it was better than where i came from i want to be one of them yeah well i mean that's kind of what happened to uh to like ayan hersi ali who went she i don't think she was in norway i think she was, she she was in sweden in, no she went to um the netherlands i believe okay or somewhere or denmark somewhere up in that it's right there. We don't. Yeah, it's in, right. You, it's right in that you know the area. Come on, people. <laughs> Just work with us on this. Where but, was it? Was a, it was a Danish cartoonist, right? I think it was. She was from the same country. Okay. I think it was Denmark. <laughs> I'm just saying. It. 
<laughs> anyway, she gave up. She she caught on and gave up the whole uh, Muslim thing. I just it's shocking that other people don't do that. Yeah. However, I have to say I do. I have read several reports of people in Scandinavia treating Muslims very very badly. Okay. So I never I, doubt me when I like it was. She was Dutch. She went to. Okay. She went to uh, the Netherlands. Great. Good okay. for good for you. I just wanted to throw that in there. Yeah. No, you okay. did great. You right. did a really good thing. But <sighs> you got it right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, here, I, what I wanted to say, and maybe this is the takeaway, maybe what we need to be careful of, because we don't, we need to let go of this idea that we we can't criticize Islam as a as a body. Right. We need to let go of that because we need to be criticizing Islam as a yeah. body. And and especially we need to be cre- criticizing the ideas, the the bad ideas of if Islam. If they're willing to give up all the bad ideas and they just want to pray five times a day and go to Mecca once in their life and, and give wear, alms to the poor. And wear funny hats. And, and wear funny hats and whatever. whatever and great. Awesome. That's I fine. I have no problem. Just give up your fucking bad ideas. Right. And we won't. And then we can get along. And we won't rest until those bad ideas are uh, until the light is shining brightly on these bad ideas. Yeah, but the problem is there's 1.5 billion of them in the world. We need a big light. <laughs> anyway, but but maybe the lesson that I'm learning here is we need to be extremely careful not to criticize the people. This is not about Islam. Muslims are bad people. They mm-hmm. are, I mean, they're... For, Aren't bad people. What? What did you say? They are not bad people. They are not bad people. I mean, there are Muslims who are bad people, just but as that, there are atheists who are any, bad yeah, people. Yeah. Uh, but the but the point is, we we need to be welcoming to the humans and completely hostile to the bad ideas. Absolutely. And that's what we're getting at. That, I think that's a good conclusion to come to, don't you think? Uh, well, yeah, and uh, you know, because there's nothing wrong with any with that, right? And that's mm. that's that needs to be our mantra. Yeah. Um, we are. Yeah. And, and we need to be aware of that. That's the issue. And we need to be open to like, you know, if I say X is a bad idea and mm-hmm. someone says, actually, I disagree with you, I'll listen to why. Right. I'll listen to why you think it's a, a good idea. And hell, there may be a lot of things that I haven't thought about because I Lord knows, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't, I haven't thought of all of the things. I just haven't. Well, how humble. I know, right? Dan. Well, oh. I, I do, <laughs> I do like to fake humility every now and then. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, so that, so that's where we leave you. Uh, go out there, criticize bad ideas. Don't criticize people. Yeah. Unless they're just jerks. Assholes. We, you don't have to put up with assholes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, if you'd like to join the conversation, maybe you'd like to criticize us. Yeah. Call us on something. We're bad people. People sure. call us on our shit all the time. <laughs> Holy crap. If Yeah. And if you'd but like you to be, do you, that. But you better come correct. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna come, you better come correct. We don't fact our, fact check ourselves the first time, but, but if you call us on it, we're gonna fact check ourselves. <laughs> um, so you can do that uh, by emailing us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Right, or you can uh, you can leave us a voicemail. We we love to hear your voice. That's uh, area code four two four. Yeah, six 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 eight four four two. That's Beverly Hills, by the way. Hell's yeah, <laughs> that's where we could get that number. <laughs> All right, and uh, of course our Facebook page, facebook dot com slash tgi atheist, and we're on Twitter as well at tgi atheist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go there. Go to our web page and uh, and click on you know which is thankgodimatheist dot com, and you can click on the support tab if you want to support us. Absolutely. Um, and then, of course, uh, there is the uh, new members only lounge. Oh, the members the only lounge. TGIA members only lounge on Facebook. Look for us. Request an ad, and and, and we'll we probably will... give it to you. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we're trying to we we do have to like check everybody out because we're trying to avoid spammers and people trying to sell you jeans and stuff. Yeah, no, we don't want jeans. No. All right. Well, um, of course, thanks to Mackenzie for all of her help on Facebook. And thanks to the Red Rock Hot Club for their beautiful music. And thank you for listening. Have a great week, everybody. (laughs) Bye-bye.